a beautiful day here in Chemistry Lab 312 at Roosevelt High School as our competitors enter the arena ready to take on the elements, the minerals, and the chemicals on the field of battle. Welcome to our 23rd annual coverage of the Chem Games, everybody. I'm Mia Beaker, and our analyst, Adam Small, joins me here. And Adam, if there's one thing that you and I both know, it's that once these kids enter the chem lab, anything can happen. That's right, Mia, anything at all, from slips and spills to falls and fires. But it doesn't have to be that way. And that's why this pregame time is my favorite part of the event. Well, before we get too far, Adam, how about we explain the chem games to viewers who might just be tuning in for the first time? Sure thing. The chem games are a competition between chemistry classes from different high schools all across the country. Teams compete independently and are judged on how well they perform in the chemistry lab under game conditions. Points are awarded by an independent panel of judges based on how safely they execute a variety of laboratory techniques. Points are also awarded based on how well the students respond to emergencies like spills or fires if they happen to occur. At the end of the year, the team with the most combined points wins. So all of these kids are competing as a team. That's right. Lab safety is a team concept. One letdown by any individual and the whole team can get hurt. Speaking of the judging, each element is scored by the five judges on a scale from 1 to 10, and the average score is awarded to the team. Taking a look at the standings of the 37 teams that have competed so far this year, Archer High is out front with 60.17 points, followed closely by Smith, Bass, and Carver with 57.93. If Roosevelt is going to try to steal a victory, it needs to make a break for it today. Well, they're certainly off to a good start in the pre-game preparation, which is a judging element in this competition. Look there, you can see the crisp, clean, uncluttered work areas with nothing on the floor. Over there, all of the glassware is in the cabinets. None of it is sitting in the sinks. All of the chemicals are properly stored. Over here, you've got the kids gearing up, putting on safety goggles and lab coats, rolling up their long sleeves. You just get the feeling that everybody's getting ready. They've got their heads in the game, and it's going to be a great day. Well, Adam, while the contenders are receiving their pregame instructions, you mentioned some of the safety precautions commonly used here in the lab. Why don't you tell us a little more about them? Listen, if there's one thing that these kids need to learn, it's that no one wants to get hurt. That's part of my keys to the game. They need to avoid the silly mistakes by taking precautions. A chemistry lab can be a dangerous place, so you need to be careful. Wear the safety protection equipment, learn how to safely handle chemicals, and don't play around. It all comes down to the fundamentals of lab safety, like knowing how to respond to emergencies, accidents, spills, and fires. They also need to know where the emergency equipment is stored. When these kids are working in the lab, they need to determine exactly what it is they want to do, and then they need to develop a plan of action, proceed with caution, and use sound technique. Well, that all starts even before they get into the room, right? That's right, Mia. If you're going to participate in the chem games, you have got to be dressed for the job. Nobody should be wearing shorts or skirts or open-toed shoes. Long sleeves should be rolled up. Long hair should be pulled back. And no dangling jewelry. Heck, in my day, you got made fun of if you wore any of that stuff anyway. But it especially shouldn't be worn in the chemistry lab. So what you're saying is, prepare even before you get in here. Exactly. And once you do, always wear safety goggles, like these here. They might look silly, but they protect you. Don't wear your goggles, and if this beaker explodes, you could go blind. Lab coats are aprons as well. They protect you and your clothes. Boy, remember that kid back in 79? I don't even like to think about it. Let's see what the judges think about Roosevelt's lab preparation. Should be pretty good. We had one pair of open-toed shoes and a missing lab coat. Those will hurt a little, but these kids seem to be ready to go. Judged on a scale from 1 to 10, the judge is given 8.7. Good start. Boy, over the years, we really have seen it all, haven't we? Slips, spills, breaking glass, even a fire or two. Safety techniques are all important to follow because they help prevent accidents. And while accidents are rare, they do happen, and people can get hurt. Just as important, though, is what to do in case of an accident. Y you see that a lot, Mia. You'll see someone take all the necessary precautions, but an accident still happens. Then what? I'll tell you what. You have to know what to do. 
Well, the action has begun, and as it does, there is activity everywhere. Yeah, and at a time like this, you can tell that these kids have really done their homework. Look at those chemicals. They're stored perfectly. Look at how well they're labeled. Well, the storage areas seem to be cool and dry, and they've stored the acids separately from the flammable chemicals. The acids are stored close to the floor to prevent them from falling, and the explosives... Whoa! You really want to keep an eye on them. You bet. The explosives are stored in their own separate storage bin. And those labels are great. They tell you everything. Like if a chemical is a poison, if it is flammable, explosive, corrosive, everything. Yeah, it's important to know how to read those labels. And not to use chemicals that aren't labeled. Just look at the technique these kids are using when handling chemicals. Watch this guy. See how he checks the label twice. Let's look at that again from another angle. He reads the label, and then he reads it again. And hey, it is a flammable chemical, so he's wearing gloves. That's just good execution. That's the way it's supposed to be done. What do the judges think about the chemical handling techniques here? Should be a good score. It is a 9.6. I can't see where they lost the four tenths, but hey, who understands these guys sometimes? Over here, there's some pouring going on. What do you think, Adam? Seems like she's diluting acid. It's decision time. Will she pour the water into the acid or vice versa? She lifts the acid and pours while stirring. Yes, what a play. The judges agree, a 9.9. .9. Why should it be done that way and not by pouring the water into the acid? Because the heat of reaction would cause the water to explode into steam and the acid could splatter and burn you. Ouch. <laughs> you bet, ouch, or even worse. Pour acids into water, not the other way around. What happens to the players if they get hit with a chemical? They should hold the area under running water for at least 15 minutes. And if they got something in their eyes, they should flush them out for 15 minutes at the eye washing station. The thing about washing the eyes is you have to hold the eyelids open. Otherwise, the chemical might stay under the eyelid. Well, I guess those safety goggles really come in handy when you have to get close to the chemicals, like when they have to smell them. Mia, they shouldn't be putting the chemicals that close to their faces. These kids shouldn't smell the chemicals directly anyway. It's a bad move, and it can put you out for the rest of the season. If they've got to smell them, Mia, they should waft the scent toward their nose with their hand. Yeah, like this over here. Just enough to get the scent. Oh my, looks like our first accident of the day. We have a spill. How did that happen? Well, the little one got a little careless with a beaker, Mia. And while you should be careful and try not to spill the chemicals, it sometimes does happen. What is important now is that they get that spill cleaned up right away before it comes into contact with someone or the equipment. They should also keep in mind the proper method to use to clean it up. It's really a race against the clock here. What method should they use? Calm down, Mia. The key to dealing with any lab emergency is to remain calm and act deliberately. The proper method for cleaning a spill depends on what was spilled. If an acid is spilled, they must first neutralize it with a base and then clean it up. If it is a base, they need to use an acid. You can't start cleaning up the acid or the base until they have been fully neutralized. And don't use water to clean up a flammable chemical because if it catches fire, the water will spread it out. Well, it looks like they've got their assets and bases covered over there. But what do the judges think? Should be another good one, Mia. That was a beautifully executed cleanup. The judges agree and give a 9.72.